The procedure begins with the patient in the supine position. A bite block should be used and the patient should be under general endotracheal anesthesia. This helps to protect the airway during the passing and retrieval of the endosponge. The scope is advanced down the patient's esophagus. The perforation is depicted here in the distal esophagus with the fistula cavity outside of the lumen and within the mediastinum and right chest. This is a potential cavity as the adjacent organs are displaced after the perforation occurs. The scope should be advanced through the perforation and into the cavity to explore it and irrigate the cavity. The endosponge is then created and carried down the esophagus to the perforation site using the endoscope. The endosponge should be advanced to the perforation site and inserted into the fistula cavity. With a large cavity, it is essential that the endosponge be placed extraluminally to facilitate collapsing the cavity. Once negative pressure is applied, the cavity will collapse around the endosponge. For retrieval, the endosponge is removed and discarded, and another endosponge is created. This process is repeated until the cavity is small enough that extraluminal placement is no longer possible, and the endosponge is placed intraluminally to finalize the closure.